Hi. Hi. Hey. This is riding in the sand. Uh, sounds kind of weird. That's my sexy voice, by the way. Once I get the girl ready to go, I use my sexy voice. Kind of like Batman, but not as deep. Probably doesn't sound as good right now because my cheeks are really squeezed because it's time when I'm still breaking in. But let's start uh, recording episode number three of the Bill series. Alright, let's do this! <laughs> Welcome to the episode number two, uh, uh, two, three, uno, two, three, one, two, number third episode of the build series of the beautiful ultimate Yamaha R6 that currently I am perched upon. Now I thought it would be really cool to start this video off with my leg on top of a race rail and then looking to the camera and kind of describing who I am, what are my passions, my interests, what turns me on, what turns me off. But you guys aren't here for that are you? You guys are here to see the ultimate R6 being built. So without further ado, I welcome you to episode number three, where we get rid of these race rails and we go with the traditional frame sliders, but not just any kind of frame sliders, woodcraft frame sliders, and not any kind of woodcraft frame sliders, but custom Super Saiyan Gold frame sliders on the ultimate r6 so stay tuned now i know what you guys are thinking a lot of you guys said for the third episode of the build series how about we remove and change this ugly piece of crap the seat that was a project that went really really bad and now it's getting all torn up and shredded and as you guys can see it's coming off but I feel like we can still do that in the future, but right now we need to do what's very, very important. But you know what's more important than changing? Important. -er. <sighs> but you know what's more important than removing the seat and replacing it? Is to take off these big, bulky race rails. These are heavy, they're really destroying the look of the bike, and I feel like we've had it for three plus years and we've done it justice. Like, I feel like I've given this product enough love. The race rails will receive more than enough love, in my opinion. So it's time to get rid of these, put on some frame sliders and that's what today's episode is going to be about shout out to woodcraft for partnering up for this video hope you guys enjoy it and remember subscribe only because you love me and now let's get on the bike gt3 rs but no the baby r6 isn't ready for that yet the nimbus on it that's why i'm so used to the quick shifter man I'm so used to the quick shifter that was so embarrassing but i'm gonna show it to you guys because we real we honest i'm gonna show it to you guys my errors my mistakes my flaws are all for you guys so you guys can see it take it in slurp it whatever you guys want to do with it it's all yours see now this instance i could lane split right i just don't feel that comfortable doing it knowing that i ooh, that's not an m-series X6, that's not an M-Series. You bought that badge. It's not an M-Series. It's like buying a normal R R1 and then putting the emblem on it of uh, R1M. Uh, it's too tinted, plus my visor's, tint my visor's tinted so I can't see inside. But I can kind of tell who it is. You, you could always kind of tell. I'm not going to say it, because then you guys are going to be like, racist. But uh, you already know who it is. I don't even know what I was talking about. No, what I was saying was that lane splitting, I remembered. Lane splitting kind of like, I kind of shy away from it usually overall. When traffic's moving a lot, I don't really lane split. You know, because I feel like someone's going to swerve, someone's going to change lanes. Because I do it too. I change lanes. Everyone changes lanes. Swap lanes. Like you swap and spit, you swap lanes. Everyone does it. So that's why I don't trust it. But with Nimbus, sometimes I still do it when I just, I'm confident, I know I can get through. Then I can do it, it's not a problem. But having these big ratios sticking out of the bike, sometimes that kind of shreds my confidence even more. And I'm like, you know what? Let's not F it. Let's just, let's, let's not do this. Let's not lane split. So many times I just won't lane split because I'm like, do I have enough clearance? Do I not? You know, I'm not a physics major. Nah, but like, so that's why they stick out so much and then, I was going to show you the other one, which rattles, because I got them installed from the place I bought it from, but they didn't install it correctly. I tried to fix it the best I could, but, uh, 
but I will say that these race rolls, they rattle. Because the, the puck, this puck right here, on the other side, I can't move my, I can't move my throttle hand because I'm throttling. Um, it wasn't installed correctly, so it rattles like crazy. I tried to fix it as much as I could and stop rattling. Now it's rattling again. I should have showed you guys that off the bike, but my camera was overheating. Because it's really hot outside today, so I couldn't record all the stuff I wanted to. But we're out here, and we can just talk about it on the bike. Because the motovlog is the best thing ever. And as always, warning, caution, whatever, this video is going to be long. So be ready for that. Uh, all right, so this, can you guys see that? You guys probably can hear it too. It rattles like crazy. This bolt itself, it moves. It wasn't done correctly, it wasn't put in correctly, so it moves. And I hate that about it, I really do, because when I'm riding it rattles and I don't like it. I always feel like I'm missing a bolt, which I am, but it's I can hear that the noise is coming from that, because when I hold it and then ride, um, very dangerous, but I still try it sometimes. The rattling goes away. <laughs> Pothole. We're supposed to take a left right here, but he's okay. He's okay. We'll make a U-turn up ahead. But the rattling is something I hate. Because it makes you think that the bike's about to fall apart. It gives you that nasty feeling when you're riding. You want to pull over and inspect the bike because you feel like the bike's going to go kaboom. It could be fixed. That's what I'm trying to say. It could be fixed. I just don't care about it anymore. Because we're getting rid of them. I knew, it was gonna, I knew I was going to get rid of them for a very long time. I was just waiting until the build series started and then I would get rid of them. Ooh, rider with no gear on at all. I'm telling you guys, this build series is off to a very big success. And I want to take a moment to thank every each and every one of you guys for helping me just by watching the videos, man. Just by watching the videos is a big, big help. I can't tell you how much of a help it is because the videos that you guys watch are the videos that sponsors watch to see if they want to sponsor the channel or not or sponsor the next episode or not. Big, big shout out to each one of you guys for supporting the channel and watching the videos and sharing them, commenting, things like that, asking for more of them because like I said, sponsors watch these videos and they decide if they want to sponsor me or not. Oh, that is hella loud. So that's one of the reasons that we're getting rid of the race rails, just because it doesn't fit my needs anymore. I don't want something bulky, I want something cut and nice looking, because I want to show off the gold chrome Super Saiyan R6. And if these bulky things stand out, plus these are mostly made for racers, or uh, not racers, stunners. Not racers, stunners, people who stun on bikes. Have you guys ever seen your boy saying stunt? Do you know? If you know me, you know I'm not gonna. I'm not into stunning or any of that stuff, pulling wheelies and stuff like that. I am. I do think they're kind of cool, but I wouldn't. I don't know. I would rather want to practice on a smaller bike than one of these bikes that I feel like I'm gonna loop and die. I got them because for the longest time I thought they were. I liked them. I liked them. I thought they would make the R6 look cooler. I liked the look for a while. I would say about a couple months I dig the look. I dig. Who says that anymore? I, I, I like the look of the R6 with the race rolls for a couple of months. After that, it just it became something. That I wanted to take off, but I kept them on because I was lazy and because once again I've been planning this build series for ages. For ages upon ages, I wanted to do this build series. See that? Looks nice, doesn't it? I want to get on the top and then just jump off. As you guys can tell, I'm not suicidal. I just like jumping from high locations to a very low location. I think it's cool. I dig it. I want it. I get it. I got it. And like I already mentioned, I'm trying to go over all the points that I had of why we're getting rid of the race rails. Too bulky. They're going to be lighter once they're off. More clearance to lane split. I'm better aesthetically. The bike is going to look a lot better. Trust me, the bike is going to look a lot better. We seriously got to get them off and put the frame sliders on. And soon, this bike is not just being built aesthetically. This bike is also being built performance-wise. It can't just look like a Super Saiyan. For that, it needs to be training on the track. That's where the true test is going to be for this bike. If it can, it's a track monster, right? So huge shout out to Woodcraft for partnering up for up, part of, partnering up with us. I'm sorry, this, I'm still breaking in this helmet. And my cheeks are hella squeezed, so my words are coming out mumbled. But I want to say a huge shout out to the Woodcraft team. Hopefully they're going to be watching this video. Shout out to Mr. Eric. Uh, thank you so much for um, you know taking a chance to work with me. And once again, this is thanks to all you guys, all you viewers, every one of you guys that watched the video, shared the video, commented on the video, asked for more. I want to thank you guys, but thank you again because it's all because of you guys that someone like me can actually do a build series and contact companies and have companies, you know, actually be like, you know what, this guy can provide some value to our company. Let's work with him. And that value was created by me and by you guys. It's a joint effort. Like, we
we can make this shouldn't be an issue but it still scares me still scares me oh we made it up to that porsche that means he's not going fast but still still scares me uh, still scares me further ado let's head into the garage let's strip down the race rails let's play around with the frame sliders let's unbox the frame sliders and again i want to thank each and every one of you guys for the support remember to subscribe only because you love me because i love you well, let's head to the garage ba boom hola como estas we're back in the hyperbolic time chamber aka my garage and we got some unboxing to do and we got the beautiful baby r6 right here with the ugly race rails we hate the race rails so much right now. We don't hate it. We just know that they're, we dislike it at the moment because after the, after the bike became gold chrome, we just, they have to go. We got some riding insane wristbands. If you're interested, link is in the description below. Um, so yeah, we're going to be unboxing this bad boy right here. These are frame sliders in here, or are they? All right, so let's do this. All right, yep, one take, beat that. All right, so we got some cardboard um construction paper we're going to use this to write a love letter to woodcraft and thank them for actually sending us and working with us and partnering up with us all right now let's count down in uh in spanish so we got one uno we got dos we got tres and we got cuatro once again my spanish teacher is probably vomiting right now knowing that all the stuff you taught me is uh pretty much useless went right over my head all right we got the woodcraft instructions right here once again support woodcraft support the companies that support your boy and support the baby r6 and then we got woodcraft stickers all right so it's two stickers all right we got four styrofoam packets so now let's start unboxing the packets what do you want to guess is in here we have the uh, big black thing. Um, so this is, I believe, the base of the frame slider. This is going to be the top part. Um, but yes, yeah, so we got the brace, the frame slider. Um, we got our bolts. We got a big black one that goes in this hole that's pretty tight. They're compatible with screws. And then we got the second one. So this is the longer base, like I said in the instructions. Longer base is for the right side. I'm joking, it's for the left side. I'm just, I'm just testing you guys. We got a big black one in here too in a tight hole, no pun intended. And now we have the main attraction. You feel that? You hear that? You hear that? <laughs> All right, so the first packet, let's see what's in here, numero uno. Aquí se una amiga de grande culísimo. I don't know. All right, so this is the Woodcraft frame slider puck. God, this looks so amazing. I love this thing so much. So as you guys can see, it says Woodcraft right there. I can't tell you how much I love these. Like I want to seriously buy one of these just so I can keep it in the car. And then whenever someone overtakes me, I just, instead of throwing a D battery at somebody, I would just open the window, slide my window down and just chuck this at them. That'd be amazing. All right, so we have this right here. It's aluminum finish, I believe. This is where we're going to be changing so it matches the gold. So wait, why wait for this? So what do you want to guess is in here, huh? huh? A water cash? Nah, a aluminum frame slider. <laughs> you guys hear that? All right, so we have two Woodcraft frame slider pucks right here. And then we have the base. So this will go inside here. Um, most likely you would open this just to show you guys. We're gonna be doing this anyway. So I'm guessing this will go in here like that. Um, this goes through and then we're gonna have this go inside the uh, The bike and then this ins this will be inside the big black thing is gonna go through this tight little hole and this is gonna go inside the uh, The bike itself and then you're gonna see this at the top um, And it'll say woodcraft or it'll be like this instead We'll see now all we have left is to get these colored and then take those off the R6, and then move on to the next step of actually installing these bad boys after their color onto the finished baby R6. I really wanna just come up with a name or tell you guys what the name is for the R6. I wouldn't have to call it a baby R6. What we're gonna be doing though is taking these frame sliders and getting them powder coated. And our goal is gonna to be to get them to 
I was thinking maybe a color that matches the, uh, the ratios currently because right now they match the wheels. I'm gonna do my best to show you that process if I can. Um, if not, you'll just see the finished product of this being aluminum, polished, finished, and then you'll just see the gold version. And then uh, we'll take it from there. What's up everybody, this is Riding Insane and we are back. For you guys, it must, might be a couple of seconds, but for me, it's an entire week. And a lot has changed in that week, as you guys can tell just by the little, comparing the last video or the last footage or the last scene to this scene, all of a sudden we're not recording this build series in a, uh, in a ditch anymore. We actually have some proper lighting. But now, like I said, we're not recording in a ditch. We're actually recording a build series the way it should be. Shout out to Nimbus right there. Build series coming soon for Nimbus right there. But we actually, you guys can actually see what's happening. You guys can actually hear my voice and the things that I'm doing much more clearly. Um, we have the Woodcraft frame sliders right here. We got other mods for the R6 all in one area. We also have mods for the S1000 because that build series is starting very, very soon. We finally got the frame sliders back. And as you guys can tell, the color looks kind of different, doesn't it? Because we got the frame sliders powder coated. Both of the frame sliders have been powder coated. I wanted to show you guys that process of getting everything powder coated, but the place that I found, the amazing place that I found that does the powder coating, they had the timings of eight to five, which is the same time that I go to work at. So um, my full-time job. So I wasn't able to go out and record the powder coating experience. All right, so let's move on to the main subject at hand, which is removing these ugly race rails, which they're not ugly. I used to love them. I just don't like them anymore. But we're going to be removing these beautiful race rails. That's, that's a better word, beautiful race rails. Before we uninstall these bad boys, I just want to go over and show you guys what exactly these race rails have, what they do, because a lot of people think that these this is drilled in and things like that, and it's not. So let's go over the anatomy of the race rails before we uninstall them and chuck them onto a Prius. We have two um, aluminum pucks right here, or not aluminum, plastic pucks right here, the one that I hate the most, the one that rattles. Um, these two bolts right here are the ones that hold these um, plastic pucks in place. Uh, a lot of people think the top part is going inside the frame or the fairing, but it's not. As you guys can see my fingers right there, it is not going inside. It's only the bottom one that's right here that's actually going into the frame. Now, if we move to the back part um, of the frame slider, this right here. So there's two of these holes in the frame. I don't know what they're for, but there's two holes. There's a big little long bolt or a long screw thing. You guys will see when I take it out that goes through this and it goes through the other side of the bike. All right, so we got our little cool little tool thing right here, our snap-on tool that we're gonna be using to remove it. I have no idea what this is, but this is what we have to use to remove it, so let's remove it. All right, let's do this. Um, these two things came out. So it's this long metal rod that you guys can see. Focus, um, the other parts that we took off, same stuff on this side. Long metal rod that holds this in place. So now we can kind of, kind of shake it. And um, so now we're gonna move on and take off the pucks, the plastic pucks, and then remove the frame sliders all together, or the race rails all together. Um, so once you remove that, Take them off just like that. We have this little cool little bolt that I hate more than anything. And then you got a puck in the back that you can just take off. Um, since the frame bolt is within here, right within there, um, we don't really need to take off the top one because once again, it's not connected to anything. It's just there, so when you slide, um, the puck's gonna do all the take all the damage. So we're gonna leave the top ones on because we don't need to take them off. And now let's remove the frame sliders, bolts from the inside. As you guys can see, the frame sliders are now easily being able to come out. We are all out. 
Now for the other side. So right here, we do have a cut. They do need this little area right here to fit into the frame. And it's the same thing gonna be with the frame sliders we're gonna be installing. So the good thing is that we already have this little area that's cut open. So then the frame slider puck can easily go in and then just set right here. Now for the glorious moment that you guys have been waiting for, we got the two frame slider pucks provided by Woodcraft. Shout out to Woodcraft again. So without further ado, let's take them out and let's check them out. Here it is. The frame sliders that we just got powder coated. Um, for some reason, the camera is not doing it justice. You cannot, can you let me see, wait. You guys can kind of see the, the sparkles is what I like to call it. It's called flaking, but the sparkles went inside the uh, gold, mixed in with the gold. But this is a color that we chose. Um, there's another cool color. Um, it's different, it's also gold, but I thought that we can do that later. It's easy to remove these pucks from the frame sliders base, which is one of the reasons why I went for these is because whenever, if you ever do slide or ever crash, you can just take off this puck and replace it. And the frame slider itself, the base, stays inside the bike. So we'll go into that once we start installing it. But hopefully you guys like the color. There is, like I said, another color that we'll be trying out later. So now if you see it with the bike, it kind of makes more sense. We didn't go for a full gold chrome color. Um, because too much chrome, we already have a lot of chrome on the bike. Wanted to go for something different that would still match the bike and kind of like stand out and not kind of like, I don't want it to like fall into the color of the chrome. When people just assume it's like, you know, part of the bike. That's why like each part, all the gold parts on the bike have a kind of a, a different um, touch. Like if you look at the forks, they're a little bit different. The tires or the rim, the gold on the, on the gold on the rims is a little bit different. We're getting other gold bits added to the bike and I want them each to kind of stand out but also mix in together. The way that I see it in person, you can see the sparkles and the gold so much better and the color matches insanely well. So you guys will just have to see it in person one day. But you gotta trust me on this that we're also, like I said, might change colors but for now, this is the color that we went for and hopefully it's gonna look amazing on the bike. All right, so without further ado, let's um, put these on the bike and then finally uh, bring this build series episode to an end and change the look of the R6 completely again. All right, so you guys are probably wondering where we left off. We took off the race rails. Currently, we're putting on the frame sliders and you're probably wondering what this blue tape is. Um, this blue tape is actually here. So off the camera, I was cutting the fairings because you're supposed to do that. The Woodcraft frame sliders require you to cut it Otherwise you can't fit it. So I was cutting this. So the wraps cut too. So I put blue tape, I marked it off. So it's a perfect, perfect fit. Um, I had to cut that. There was a cut here before for the race rails, but it wasn't big enough because this is uh, more chunkier. We had to um, take our fairings and black it out, if you know what I mean. So the frame sliders could fit. The race rails are pretty small compared to the frame sliders, but lighter, bigger, but lighter. Um, so I did that off the camera because it was something I wasn't sure about and uh, well, yeah. All right, let's see what the damage is. Wow. I honestly thought the wrap would have been destroyed, but it hasn't. It actually looks pretty nice. Pretty nice, Keen Peel. All right, so a big reason that we had to wait to uh, finish the build series episode last time was because I did not have this little tool right here. So with the frame slider, this black thing right here, this big black screw right here, this goes in there. I did not have this piece, so I had to find it, order it, bring it in. And that's one of the reasons it got a big delay. But now that we have this piece, we're gonna be putting this into the hole on the bike. And then we bloom, 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 tighten this. Then we take this little thing out because this is gonna be tightened, right? And then we take the beautiful frame slider puck that we have and we're gonna align the holes and ba-boom. And then we're gonna put in the screw right here, fully installed. So we have some Gorilla Glue that we're gonna be using on the uh, frame slider bolt. That was gonna go, I'm joking. The instructions say anti-seize, so we're gonna be using anti-seize lubricant on the bolts. 
And the reason for that is, well, who knows, but we're gonna be using anti-seize, so let's do this. I'm not entirely sure how much to use, very little I put on there. Totally jacked up my gloves, but it's okay, we'll wash them. Into the frame, and slowly turn. All right, so we have our torque wrench we're gonna be using, and we have everything set up. Stick this little hole in there, make sure the camera is focused. All right, so we have that finally done. Torque the spec. Oh, there you go. Put the hole like that on the bottom one. Say, Mamma Mia, it goes in. All right, so it's in there perfectly tight. Usually this is on the top over here, but I wanted to have the most minimalistic look as possible. So you went with going in, putting it upside down. Usually that would be a problem because usually it says Woodcraft right here. And if we had installed this the way that it did, then Woodcraft would be on the bottom and it would look weird. But since we powder coated this, Woodcraft's um, symbol is gone. So we can have, we have the luxury of putting uh, it upside down. So here we are on Nimbus, just to show you guys what I meant. That usually is supposed to look like this with the top flat screw right here and then Woodcraft logos. And before I install the right side, I wanted to show you guys how it looks like. So you guys can kind of be a, a better judge. Now on this side, I put the race rails back on. This is the right side of the bike. And I put the race rails back on so you, we can see or you guys can see how the bike would look like if it still had its race rails on there. So this is the best judge, as you guys can tell the biggest difference. One side is extremely streamlined, but then if you look at the left side, you guys can see the race rails sticking out. So I feel like it changes the look of the bike where one is kind of like a racy and the other way is other side is kind of more like a stun, more of like an aggressive look. And I feel like with the race rails, it, the look isn't bad. It's just not my style right now. This is a look that we've been used to for the R6 um, for, for like three plus years, I wanna say. And this is gonna be the new look. Extremely streamlined. All right, so we're gonna take these off, put on the frame sliders, the Woodcraft ones, and then I'll show you guys the final look. All right, so we have the base on there, but we, this is the puck, but the base itself, as you guys saw, we have that on here. I haven't put this on yet. Only thing is that if you look under here, it's a very snug fit and it's already tearing the wrap. I won't be able to reach the bottom with the fairings on. So we're gonna have to remove this fairing or at least loosen it up so I can tighten the bolt down there and then slide the fairing back up. The only issue is that we already scuffed up the fairing, the wrap, so. Good thing is we're rewrapping this bike, but well, you might have to trim down this part of the fairings as well. Otherwise, we won't be able to have it on correctly. But no worries, there's always gonna be something that comes in the way. And for us, it's a very small thing. You just gotta take the fairings off, put the bolt back on. And once the bolt's on nice and snug, we put the fairings on and then we take it from there. Whew, so we're back. Um, apparently, the camera was not recording me actually working on the frame sliders and attaching them. So the way we accomplished this difficult difficult task, this is supposed to be the easy side, but it was actually pretty hard. I took off the bolt right there, and there's one bolt right there. That bolt right there, and one thing, if you guys can look at this bolt, you fix one problem, you create another one, right? So if you look closely, you will see that this bolt is slanted. So it wasn't like that before, but for some reason when I was putting it back in, it, it kept going sliding up. I spent a good like 20 minutes trying to make sure that the bolt's going in right, but it just won't. So this was a difficult task. It was actually very easy, but having to record every step or some of the steps and finding angles, making sure the audio is working, video, like I just said, I missed some of the video of me actually taking things off and you know, working on the frame slider for this side. Um, the video wasn't recording, but I'm getting used to it, I have to learn. I'm still in the process of getting better at this. Um, this job took more hours than it should have. Doing these build series, they're not easy at all. I thought they were gonna be easy, but they're not. But our goal is to continue to go on and with your suggestions and feedbacks, so we can keep getting better. Um, but I really dig the new look, it looks amazing. The bike looks totally different now. 
So the last episode we did the headlights. This episode we are removing the race rails out of the frame sliders. And again, we have changed the look of the bike completely and I'm loving it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the build series, episode number three. Remember to subscribe only because you love me. Remember to check out the other episodes and also stay tuned for the next um, video. Not, prob not probably the next one, but a video where we actually take this bike out, show you guys in the daylight how it looks and um, so you guys have a better perspective. And then I, you know, give you more of my thoughts on why and how and whatever comes out of my mouth because a lot of stuff comes out of my mouth. But I'm just, oh, God, it looks so amazing. All right, until next time, this is Riding Insane. Remember to subscribe only because you love me and I love you. And I'm out. Peace. What about humanity?